Cup, the Knights and the Sea Eagles continue the battle for semi-final survival. It might also be a case of survival of the fittest. On another hot afternoon in August here in Sydney, cloudless skies and a Cogra Oval, plenty of colour. A sensational crowd here building up for this match. A match that really puts it on the line for Manly and St. George. Only the hint of a breeze coming off famous Buttoning Bay where some Sydney yachties are also taking advantage of the marvellous conditions. But plenty of colour, plenty of atmosphere. Another virtual grand final, if you like, as these two sides have this chance of winning today and climbing into the top three. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MMI Big Game really this game going down to the line it is difficult to split these two sides now some controversy building uh, in the dressing rooms leading up to this kickoff because at one o'clock today st george coach brian smith had a team meeting he found out at 25 past one that manly had broken the league's deadline and had ruled cliff lyons out he wanted manly uh, not to be allowed to use as a fresh reserve Glenn Bourne, but that was ruled out by the league officials here at the ground. The teams as they are now, for St. George, Potter at fullback, Walford, Coyne, Beattie, a fire, Peter Coyne and Hodges, the halves, Hardy, Goulet, Priddle, Tinney, Elliot Osborne, the forwards, and that coach, Brian Smith. Important, uh, the press reserves these days, the impact they will have, Peter Gill and Mark Ellison for St. George. Now, there were those concerns for the Manly camp that late pull out by Cliff Lyons. He had a run this morning and then again just before the team bus left for the ground and he wasn't happy with the way he pulled up. So there is the change in this side. Ridge Hancock, Ira O'Connor, Stokes. Hasler goes to 5'8", although he and Tuvi will shift around at 5'8 and half. The forwards, Cunningham, Roberts, Jones, Hosking, Dunford, Bella. The coach there is Graham Lowe and the controversy about those fresh reserves, Glenn Bourne in 21 and in 41, Chris White. Michael Beattie at home leading out this St. George side. The famous red and white beef strip and a team that are having an incredibly good season. Now this chance with a win to climb into the top half of the semi-final action. Well and truly entrenched on their mind. They have speed to burn out in the backs and a forward pack now who are in good form showing that they can hold it up the middle with anybody. The players like Osborne. They'll be looking to those wingmen though to try and create the chances out wide. Martin Afire. Manly. And their fans have travelled, though, across the bridge in pursuit of the two valuable Winfield Cup points. And they are a side that really can delight the crowds as well. Both these teams will be looking to keep the ball alive. And Bella and Ian Roberts to do the damage for the Manly side up the middle. Plenty of Manly support here. This Manly side have been talked about as the likely contenders, the real team, to line up against Penrith in the grand final. This match will give us a good line on that one. Greg McCallum will have this important match under his control. And that is why it is so vital for these sides in fourth and fifth position. A win for either side can lift them into the top three. Even St. George on four and against to push out North Sydney, who have played and were defeated on Friday night. Brisbane and Canterbury outside chances still. And in the first round, round five this year, it was Manly 11-8 over St. George. Standing room only here at Cogra. Difficult bouncing ball away from Potter to Mark Coyne. Cunningham in the 40 jumper. That late change for Cliff Lyons. Potter working it towards the 22 from dummy half. That will be a problem with St. George because of the loss of Wayne Collins in that dummy half area. Potter stays there trying to get St. George started, but they get started with a penalty. As McCallum tells the manly defense to get off the man playing the ball quickly. No doubt he will try and keep these sides as far apart as possible. Yeah, Greg McCallum came up in for a bit of criticism after his match, or the refereeing of the match last week against Pen uh, Penby, between Penrith, I should say, and Canterbury for uh, four or five metres. So it's something that he will want to uh, enforce well and truly today. Tini overruns it. So crazy play on the first tackle, especially inside your own territory. Just too keen, and he put pressure on the man with the tap restart. Too flat. He was for Elliot. Turvey with the scrum feed. 
Hasler goes to Iro, who will be a handful. But if anything, St. George do have a great defensive man out there in Michael Beatty. Jones taken by Hardy. 350 points posted by St. George this season. 328 by Manley. Very similar stats for both sides. St. George have picked up 58 tries. Manley, 49. To the back line again for the Sea Eagles. Hasler sent back towards the middle. 35 metres out. Manley get a penalty. McCallum, the same rule. But it's more important for Manley because it'll be a chance at goal for that man, Matthew Ridge. And this time it's Tierney, who was too flat with the restart with St. George to give away possession. Now the penalty. And Ridge, of course, lines up against another great goal kicker today in Ricky Walford. 60%, 60.7 for Walford. 80.82 for Ridge. 59 from 73. This one. 34 metres out. Nearly in line with the posts. He just doesn't miss him from there. Ridge gets the early lead for Manley to put their fans on their feet. 2-0 over the Saints. What a crowd. And what perfect conditions. Nice day to be sitting sideline, Bill Anderson. It sure is, Graham. You know, I came to this game confused, but I'm even more confused now. Cliff Lyons is a play isn't playing. I can't pick a winner for you. There's very little breeze here, but it's a very important game, and it's going to be a super match. There he is sitting high on the stand with Graham Lowe. What about your thoughts? Confusing for Brian Smith, that controversy about the late change to that lineup and breaking the league deadline, Bill. Well, there's a lot of gamesmanship in rugby league of the 90s, and you take any edge you can get, but the fact that Glenn Bourne was listed in the reserve grade and was announced that he wasn't playing in that grade before Lyons pulled out of the first grade indicates Manly must have known something. So there could be a big fine coming for the Manly club. Now Hosking, who has just signed a new two-year deal with Manly, he's wrapped up. McCallum has called somebody out. Hosking wants to go on with it. Both sides just trying to pull players apart. Hosking still keen to continue. Beatty was the man over the top, the Saints skipper. Now Osborne gets dragged out of it by Tierney. Beatty will be penalised for a punch in the tackle. Hosking took it up strongly, taken high. And that, that appeared to be a punch coming up from underneath from Beattie. And that happened on the open side to where McCallum was. He was quick to act. A couple of early mistakes from St. George is just what Brian Smith wouldn't have wanted because what this is doing is giving Ridge the opportunity with goal kicks with Manley getting field position. And also they're a much better side coming at your try line than they are coming off their own. Bella with a strong surge. Now Hosking again. Taken low by Elliott. Hasler. Getting Roberts working on the fringe. 32 metres away. And Graham, Paul Osborne's just limped from the field. I'll let you get on with a call and keep my eye on him. So Osborne to the sideline. He's with the trainer as he sinks team. Dig deep in defence. Tuvi. Hasler. O'Connor. O'Connor cutting out. I wrote a Stokes. He can't get to the outside of Martin the Fire. Last tackle against Manley. Ridge to bomb away players coming from onside too driving tackle from Ian Roberts into the back of Mark Coyne Peter Gill's gone on and Osborne's come off he's, he's twisted his ankle and Peter Gill out there for the Saints as Coyne was absolutely hammered by Roberts Paul Osborne has been plagued by an ankle injury for several weeks now so that would be, uh, wouldn't be any comfort at all to Brian Smith What's the feeling out there amongst the side for such a big game? Opening minutes only and you lose a key man. Well, it really does knock your, your, your pattern around because you've trained all week with, uh, with the key man, as, as is Paul Osborne, in your side. Uh, it will throw out their, their set plays, it will throw out their pattern, and it's very hard to bounce back from. Gill is a ball player, though, so he gives the St. George side some options in the forwards there. He might also be a key man to go into dummy half. Good reader of play as Iro gets in behind the line. 40 metres away from St. George. Tooby, Hasler, across the paddock, looking for a straight runner. He coughs one up. Good defence from the Saints. They put pressure on. 
plenty of pressure on Des Hasler as well. He's been shifted out to the 5'8 position. And uh, in addition to, to being shifted out from the lock four position, he's also carrying a groin injury. The advantage played here by Greg McCallum for a long time. But he's got Manley for offside out amongst the backs. Beatty just places the ball there for Peter Coyne to pick up. There'll be no goal attempt from Walford. 40 metres out. And with no Wayne Collins, you'll see Mike, uh, Mick Potter is spending most of his time at dummy half and St George using six forwards to come at them. Mark Coyne was going to get the restart for the Saints. He straightens. Now St George with their first chance. Massive home supported Cogra for this game. Potter heading it towards the post. Genie goes as a decoy. Hardy! Unloading beautifully for Gill, and he did well to hang on to that under pressure too. Tierney up the middle. Hardy. Ten metres away from the Manly line. The Saints giving it plenty of air. Hodges gets it wide to Peter Coyne. Now Goulet standing wide. Potter in the line. Beatty. Both defences well and truly online in the early stages. Hodges, he bombs away. Midfield. Saints go up for it. Knocking it back. Elliott, quick thinking to kick ahead for Walford chasing. Ridges over there and Ridges got it. So some quick thinking for, from Matthew Elliott. And nearly a chance for Ricky Walford with his pace. And it's always a gamble when you stand around as the Manly players did, not wanting to touch the ball for fear of conceding six tackles. But uh, the St George players kick through through Matthew Elliott there, almost resulting in a try. Ricky Walford on the spot, but so too was Matthew Ridge. This is the part of the field where St George will want to keep Manly pinned. They're not, not at their best here. Bill, I went down and had a good look at this ground before the kickoff. It looks a fast track, and that grass is cut extra short. I guess if you've got Wal Walford and a fire, you don't let it grow. Nothing wrong with playing to your strengths. Now Potter. Potter going right through. Great run from Potter. Still going. Looking for support. What a run. How many tacklers has he beat? Well, Quick okay. play the ball. Manly in stripe. Hodges gets it to Goulet. Goulet still on his feet. Iroh finishes off Hodges. Prittle up the middle. St George recovering from the loss of Osborne in the opening minutes and now laying on some incredible pressure. Mark Coyne, Peter Coyne, back for Potter. Potter still looking to break tackles. Walford, he's going backwards to find support. Quick hands, beautiful hands, Hodges now. Hardy to Priddle, overlap time, a fire inside of Stokes. A fire will have time to pass. No. The crowd to their feet now back. But the pressure's still on Manley. Elliott, the ball was knocked back. Goulet. Manley throwing themselves at everything in defence. Elliott. Elliott still going. Troy. The Saints erupt this Cogra Oval after handling some early trouble at their own end. What a comeback. And some great, courageous runs here. Potter started all the pressure off from fullback. And Elliott taking defenders over the line on the MMI replay. Yeah, and Elliott, a last-minute replacement for Wayne Collins. I dare say that Wayne Collins wouldn't have been strong enough to score this try, so it was a good, good, good replacement. Three tries for Elliott this year. This the most important of the season from him. Walford now. But he sprays it. So they only have it by two. The Saints 4-2 over Manly. There's been a real change in the in the conditions here, Graham. The wind's picked up. It's blowing from the north, which is unusual here at, uh, at, at Cogra, but it's in favour of Manly at the moment. It'll be very much in favour of St George in the second term. All right, Danny bringing it away. Potter. One of those runs of his from dummy half. Gets out of there very quickly. Now Brittle. Oh, 
talked about everybody on their feet. St. George coach Brian Smith. You'd think someone would give him a seat, wouldn't you? <laughs> Too nervous to sit down. Peter Coyne. Decided to pick up an easy 10, 15 metres running before he kicked. And he's been a valuable acquisition to this side. In fact, St. George in the last nine matches have only lost one match. They've been ultra consistent. And that winning streak and that, that change in performance coincided with Peter Coyne coming into the side and also Martin Afire. When those two guys came into the side and also Troy Hodges, uh, the whole complexion of St. George's year started to turn around. Peter Coyne scurries back into the defensive line. What it gave them was a half and a 5-8 with a good passing game and they were then able to play to their strengths out on the wings. What great strengths they are. Tuvi picking it up around his boot laces for Hasler. He gets it back to O'Connor but he's monstered by Beattie. He had nowhere to go. Last tackle against Manly. Some bustling coming from St. George. Ridge. Great chasing. Manly arguing that the St. George side may not have been back the full five. In fairness, they were offside. You're probably right, Phil. But Brian Smith's obviously done his homework and, and is going to be pressuring Matthew Ridge right throughout this match. The Saints lifting into full throttle. Hardy in both attack and defence. Peter Coyne switching for Goulet. Stepping back to Peter Coyne. He puts the foot down and Millie goes right through. Tierney to take it on. One-hander for a fire. A fire across the paddock trying to create extra men. Priddle back inside for a fire. He hurdles one. Bella chases him. Yeah, that was good cover defense from Martin Bella to get across there. The Saints looking sharp. Kick to the end goal. It ricochets off Ridge. It looked to ricochet off one player. I wondered if somebody was offside. Now McCallum with a penalty to Manley, which they need. And Paul Osborne's come to the sideline. He's limbering up, and I don't think he's trying just to keep warm. St. George will use him as soon as they get the chance. Ridge. Put Manley, about 35 away from their own line, in possession. Turvey brings Frank Stokes around. He gets thrown clear, then breaks one more tackle. Bella. 3-2, Manly have the penalties. Great opening to this match. Turvey to Roberts. Taken well, low and high. Bella. In the President's Cup today, St. George 23-16 winners over Manly and in reserves 18-6. Dunford. So a short side. O'Connor was there looking for the kick on the last. He was the only man on that side of the ruck. The fire gets it back to Potter. Got away from Turvey. Taken nicely by Iro. And he's had an outstanding year, Potter. He's uh, he's the, the man they call Father Time. The players reckon he seems to have been around for an eternity, but he's got a great step and he's tremendous under the high ball. He filled in at 5-8 when they needed him early in the season. Now he's gone back to his best spot at fullback and making every post a winner. Tierney. He gets finished off right on the 22. The Saints lead 4-2. Hodges. Peter Coyne. To Hardy. Hardy can't improve. Peter Coyne. Mark Coyne it is. On the last tackle. That's not clever play. Handover for Manley. St. George should have been able to produce the kick there and get down the other end. Yeah, they elected to run the ball and uh, they uh, eventually had to push the pass, something that they haven't had to do so far in this match and uh, it could be a costly error. I thought their kicking game would be a lot more prevalent and a lot better than it is at the moment. Manley will be looking to make them pay through Jones playing it back. Tuvi, Hasler, O'Connor. That Wayne Collins was a huge loss to St. George in that dummy half area. But so too is Cliff Lyons. 
The big question mark about whether Hasler or Turvey are comfortable in the 5-8 role. Dunford running in support as Hosking. Last tackle. Ridge. Not a bomb this time along the deck, but straight to Potter. The line wasn't kept, although it is now, as Jones came over heavily over the top. Potter loses it. Was it stolen? It was. Leaving Malone in the play of the ball. As soon as the tackle is affected, the, the tacklers must release the tackle player. That's not happening so far in this match, and as a result, Greg McCallum is forced to take uh, the, the reasonable action. And I, must penalty. and I must compliment you when you were at Balmain. You did it every time. Oh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Tierney struggles to 40 metres away. Credel. Five missed tackles against Manley. I think those five missed tackles must have been in the one run from Potter. I think he beat seven. Actually, I don't think our stats are right. I'll let you fight with him. Hodges to Peter Coyne. Delayed the pass for a moment to Hardy, then doubled around. Goulet, who has been standing out in the centre since the start. He's probably pumped up after that big win by Australia over the All Blacks yesterday. Yeah, congratulations to Bob Dwyer on the Wallabies. Marvellous performance. Rich linking up wide, but a difficult ball for O'Connor. Hancock. That man who threw that, uh, that bad pass, then Matthew Ridge is probably on, on the other side of the coin. Very disappointed. Toby. Now, Dunford through the dummy to Bella and gets it out near halfway. And a good start for front rowers. Some running repairs for Hosking now. Hasler standing, calling and waiting for support, but nobody came. And Graham Lowe must have done some, some thinking as to who to put in the 5-8 role because last week when Cliff Lyons went off, Hasler fed the scrums and Turvey went to 5-8. However, today, uh, Hasler's got, assuming the 5-8 role. Dunford. He kicks on the last tackle and away from Potter over the sideline. Every vantage point taken. Gallant was keeping the front rows apart as he waits for the ball to appear through Hodges. Mark Coyne. Just by two, the Saints. Potter. Great year, as we keep saying for him. He must be in line for contention for a Dally M of the year or a Rothmans medal, even. So George catching Manly out a little bit with the speed at which they're doing things. Exactly right, Bill. Very quick play of the balls. Quick switches of play. Hodges. The coin this time. They're not going to muck around. They kick. And that's the tactic I thought we'd see a lot more of. Ridge with a difficult one to Hancock. Good defence. The chasing was Mark Coyne. No doubt Manly are missing Cliff Lyons. His sideline was Bill. Well, Cliff, I hope you know you've caused a furor here at Cogger today. What happened with your late withdrawal? I didn't know that was an injury, drama, mate. Um... Well, there is, believe me. <laughs> well, anyway, what happened was I went for a run this morning, about 10 o'clock by myself. Just to see how, the, how their injury progressed. And as it turned out, it wasn't quite ready. It was about 80% right, but it wasn't 100%. Wasn't that's what you need to be. OK, yeah. what about the game so far? Are you happy with the way Manly have started? Yeah, mate, it's, a, it's an exciting game as it is already, even though we're behind. But, you know, they're going pretty good. OK, well, look, thanks for talking to us. I'll let you get back into the stand and bite your nail. <laughs> OK, great. Uh, Bill? <laughs> he is nervous. And he will be biting his nails because another mistake from Manly... And St. George have it. Mark Coyne straightens. Hasler was there, luckily. Great cover from him. Potter. St. George doing everything, as Bill said, at express pace. Right on the 22. Tierney. He's been looking for work. Three defenders on him. Hodges. To Hardy. Hardy wide to Goulet. Goulet 
climbed out of the tackle of Jones, but Roberts was there. Elliott taken quickly, and he was too slow in that dummy half area. Last tackle, Beatty, he was put off and knocked on. It'll be a handover. Quick, smart defence from Tuvi on that occasion. He was looking for the grubber kick, but Tuvi got to him before he could get a boot to the ball. We saw a good example there of how Wilson George used their second row as they get Priddle out on the right-hand side of the field and they get Goulet over, uh, out on the left-hand side of the field and they just run them at you as extra centres. And if your centres are dishonest for a moment and out of position, bang, they're through. Interesting tactics from the Saints. Plenty of thought has gone in during the week on this one. Hasler. That's where he's dangerous from dummy half. More than dangerous, Hasler on Potter. Hasler beats him. Here comes Walford. In time? No. What an individual try. Worthy of the packed house here at Cogra, Des Hasler has pulled off a stunner. He is so dangerous from dummy half on the MMI replay. He says goodbye to one, to a second, to a third. It was then Hasler on Potter, make it number four. What a versatile man playing anywhere in the lineup. He's got the pace to match it. Walford came from the clouds, but he got there. You wouldn't think this man had been working on a groin strain injury right throughout this week. He exploded out of the dummy half position. Poor market defense there, but he's one of the finest athletes in the game. Not only is he, is he fit endurance-wise, he's got plenty of pace. Great cover defence here from Ricky Walford. He left his run too late, but the momentum carries Des Hasler over. Spectacular try from Des Hasler, the manly greyhound. And he got out quickly from box one. Ridge from right in front. Another goal for Matthew Ridge. And the lead changes the third time so far. Manly eights and George Four. Medway Bank presents You Make the Call. In the Broncos match against Parramatta, Mark Hone lost the ball over the try line. Now, you make the call. Should the ruling be a goal line dropout, a 5 metre scrum, or a 22 metre tap restart? A man's best friend? Very impressive. Or a pain in the... Homer! Gee, now is this good? The Simpsons. No way! You can't give my dog away and agree with the father. <laughs> then, at eight... It felt comfortable. For the eligible Doogie Hauser. Do you remember being 17? And being hot-blooded. In love and overexcited. Doogie Hauser and the Simpsons, Tuesday on 10. What are they? Uncle Tony's kebabs. Uncle Tony's kebabs? Yeah, you, you know, succulent beef, lamb or chicken meat marinated and exotically spiced, then served hot with salad, tahini and sauce and rolled up on toasted Lebanese bread. Mm, yeah. Yeah, totally nutritious fast food alternative for only three fifty. And right now, with every kebab, you get a free cake. Yeah? Yeah, Uncle Tony's kebabs. There's an outlet near you. They're the best, mate. an electronic label maker now at your stationers drondal it's a crime not to use it my career's really taken off with these words for drondal old wormer and now you could take off when you win your way to london with drondal win a 10-day london holiday for two flying business class plus accommodation or one of a hundred other prizes just pick up an entry form from vets pet shops and pharmacies and answer this simple question Win your way to London with Drontal. So easy, it's a crime not to enter. There's never been a better time than now. 
Now's the best time you'll ever have to buy a quality Nissan from the sporty 1.8 Pulsar and the limited edition Sport to the unbelievable Power Pack Patrol and fabulous performing Pintara. For a short time only during our countdown sale, Nissan is offering great prices with end of model runouts and special factory bonuses. But these offers won't last, so be quick. Talk to a Nissan dealer today. It's a Nissan. Tonight, 8.30 on Channel 10. You make my heart sing. Seize the day. They are trying to, to extract him from the field at the moment, and that's holding the kick up off. The kick off up. Well, the touch judge is out there reporting him to the referee. He's off to the bin. He's going grudgingly. And they're going to give him more than 10 minutes. With George with 14 people on the paddock. <laughs> Peter Coyne with the restart. Taken by a fire. Some spectacular play this game opening up. Bella. Crunching tackles down near the sideline. Hosking. He's happy to take some more. And Bella and Hosking work so, so well together. When one takes a run, the other follows him. And this man has done a sensational job as well. John Jones, he's usually the third man to take it up. Tuvi goes to 5-8 on this occasion with Hasler at half. Tuvi spins out and tackles. He puts the foot down. Iro outside him. He couldn't get the ball to him. There was defenders in between them. Last tackle. The Saints have gone to sleep for just a couple of moments now. O'Connor. Was he put down after the kick? It doesn't matter. Stokes can't get it down. No. things happening here at Cogra. The bounce of the ball. You can never bet on it. A rugby league ball. Stokes shakes his head. Couldn't get it down. Falls into his hands. He thought he had a try. Beatty was there. Trying to push it down. Did he get it down on the line? He's shaking his head because Stokes believed that he got the ball down. McCallum was on the other side and by the time he got round to where the ball was, of course, St George had removed it. Interesting, Bill, that replay suggesting that he didn't get it down on the chalk. Well, it was too close for me to, you know, to, to give a convincing call on it, Graham, but it was a very tight one. And that raises the question of the in-goal touch, Judge. Should he have been on the spot as well? Well, I think he would have been blocked out by a number of defenders, so he wouldn't have had a real good view of it either. No, but it raises the question, should he be permitted to come into the field of play? That is a good call. Now, Stokes, does he get this down on the chalk? It looks like it. From there, it looks like it was a try. That angle looks like he forced it down. Peter Coyne to Hardy. He gets a kick in. St. George has been soaking up some punishment. Ridge. Did they drag him across the ground? It looks like it should have been a penalty. It is. He looked to be well and truly tackled, and then they kept sliding him over a couple of metres. Yeah, there's no doubt this, this should have resulted in a penalty as it did. His, his progress had been stopped. They just dragged him over to, to try and force the scrum, but it, they, in, in so doing, they conceded the penalty. They were looking so good at 4 2, St. George. They went to sleep as Hasler made them pay at 8 4. Now they're being busted some more times. Hancock to the corner, no one home. Hancock gets the try off the end of a ball from David Hosking. He celebrates his new two-year deal with starting a try for the wingman. On a very short blind on the MMI replay, he busted them wide open. Potter was across to the open side. He was never going to get there on time. Yeah, the man they call the mule came on the burst here. He just shouldered off a couple of defenders and great support play from Craig Hancock who showed a ton of pace to get over in the corner without a hand being laid on him. There was nothing too clever about it. It was just a case of missed tackles. There's been plenty of those in the last few minutes and George have dropped off, Bill. That they have. It, it, little things can turn a game and I believe that has, has the break from dummy half and then he got the ball over the try line, really lifted Manly and it's, and it's been a, uh, a deterrent for St George. Two from two for Ridge. 
Does he add another one from way out on the jaw? There would be few who would bet against him. Over 80%. The record for 91. Hits it pretty well. You just can't bet against him. So many highlights of the year provided by Ridge. Goals like that, it's 14 to 4. Not since Ned Kelly has the price been so high. Now you can... We congratulate him during the week he was, ma he was married. And we uh, congratulate him and his wife, Karen, for the big step in what has been a pretty busy week for him. But the honeymoon's going to have to wait. At least until after the season. Ridge. Honeymoon might be back to England where he was coaching for Wigan. If Manly win the Winfield Cup... It might be a World Club challenge between Manly and his old side in that cherry and white colour. There'd be enough interest in that to fill Wembley Stadium. Sure would. Of course, Lowe and Brian Smith have coached against each other in England. Brian Smith with a couple of wins against him. He was in charge of the whole side. Hosky. Tough encounters last week, not many tries. All of a sudden, plenty of action in this MMI big game. Hope you're enjoying it. Potter on the run. Great defense from little Jeff Turvey. There's not much to him. He is one of the first to chase the kicks. And a great head on defender, bang. He's been trouble for much of the season with a shoulder problem, but... Uh... Judging by that tackle, he's long over that problem. Peter Coyne. Goulet. The Saints needing to be the next scorers. Tierney, not a good ball back, but St. George recover. They're on their last. Peter Coyne with some numbers here, they decide to run it. Mark Coyne, back to Peter Coyne. Now he kicks. Plenty of time to put it over the sideline. Yeah, Brian Smith obviously does some homework in that area. He realises that the Manly wingers drop back on the on the sixth tackle. And uh, with Manly's defensive line, defensive pattern, there's a huge overlap. But uh, to their credit, Michael O'Connor and company moved up quickly then and blocked out the St. George runners. You know, the thing that's coming out of all of this is that Manly, even min minus Cliff Lyons, have got plenty of strike power. And when they click, and they are clicking here today uh, at the moment, they can beat anyone. They can just score from anywhere on the field. Well, a good trait that would no doubt make uh, Graham Lowe happy, Bill, is the fact that they handled so much heat from the Saints and came back with the try from Haslam. So George threw plenty at them, and that try that was scored by Elliott, it, there was a great build-up to it, and then he went over so easily. I started to think that, well, maybe Manly's, uh, Manly's defence is going to be tested here today, and maybe they are going to turn it up, but that wasn't the case. They hung on. When Hasler scored that try, that was a turning point. Now they've lifted. Hasler to halfback. So it looks like Hasler and Turby are swapping a bit. Hasler started at 5'8". Now, Hasler is spending most of the time at first receiver. Ridge onto his left foot. And a couple of bounces over the sideline. St. George have won seven out of eight matches at home in 91. Whilst Manly at the 50% record, four out of eight for their games away. Now, Turvey's been called over by McCallum. Manly have done remarkably well throughout the representative season too, Graham. Uh, when you consider that they've only lost one of their last six matches, it's a tribute to the backup players that they've used in the absence of their internationals. Certainly is. Now an overlap. Now Coyne quickly. Peter Coyne back up the middle to Beatty who slips. 61 tackles is the overall possession, the advantage for Manly. Whilst it's pretty even as far as in the opposition territory. Hodges to the back line and Peter Coyne. Beatty. Put to ground smartly by Ian Roberts. 
14 to 4, Manly. Reds going back for this one. Eight metres out from his own line. He won't beat Hardy, nor Walford. Hancock won't get away from Hardy either. Inside the last five before half time, the Saints searching for something. But I've got to repeat that St George are going to have a pretty strong wind at their back in the second 40 minutes. Ira, he takes out a fire, made sure he drew it. Stokes down the sideline. Stokes on Potter. Taken well by Potter. But Manly have an open side of the field. They line out deep. Beatty's offside. Bella's there. Way offside. He might be in the bin even. No, he's not going to send him to the bend. That would have been an option for McCallum. A lot of it'll be the chance for Ridge. A lot of experience went into that defensive play by Beattie. Way offside. He was shaking hands with Martin Bella. It's got to be close to a professional foul. Well, there were only two players outside him, and Manly had four attacking players, so there was a, a try well and truly on the cards. 100% today for Ridge. And five out of five last week as well. You know, Red during the week that he reckons he's not hitting them that well. I know plenty that I'd like to be kicking as badly. These are sort of practice kicks for him. Most of the time. He chews them up. And he keeps on doing it if you just want to give him the chance. 16 to 4. The Saints, who were doing it so well. Now they're in trouble, St. George. Needing something before the break. Graham Lowe has come down to the sideline. Only a couple of minutes away from half time. Taken powerfully by a fire. Somehow I don't think that was quite a compliment on the tackle. I don't think they were discussing the weather either. Husking. Dunford calling out for some runners. Latuvi wants to go to the back line. Hasler. Too much defence out wide. Was injured. Seemed to be protecting a shoulder. Jones. One more tackle for Manley. Ridge is deep. Can they put any pressure on him? He will go back to Michael O'Connor. He gets the kick in. Down for Walford. Looking towards the sun. That was intelligent work by Matthew Rich there. He's been put under a lot of pressure early in this game with his clearing kick, so obviously had a word to Michael O'Connor to use him as an option kicker. Beatty. Manley putting some pressure on the dummy halves. So many times they're looking and not getting rid of the ball quickly. So that problem continues without Wayne Collins. That's a difficult job. If you haven't got a specialist in there and you don't get smooth surface, smooth service, well, your, your whole game tends to become disjointed. Now Potter, he stays there once more. Peter Coyne with a long ball to Mark Coyne. The problem using Michael Potter at dummy half throughout a match is if you do drop a ball, there's a kick through from the opposition. You've no, got no fullback there to cover up at all. Little chip and Chase Hasler got there, but he fumbled. Chase is on. A fire and Stokes. Stokes stays away from the sideline. Just before the break, they tried something different. They know they need to break it up in the second half. They've got to be the next scorers. Some great play in the first 40 minutes in front of this packed Cogra Oval. It is six competition time. Congratulations to our Week 14 winners in the Fujifilm Freeze Frame and Melissa Shaw from Green Valley, New South Wales and Kay Gorman from Mount Omni in Queensland. They're both winners of a Fuji Footy Super Pack containing a Fuji Autofocus camera with Fuji Film, a pair of Reebok pumps and an autographed rugby league jumper and tickets to a Winfield Cup match.
to enter each week on the back of an envelope. Just tell us who you are, your address, and name the famous face that appears in the freeze frame during the MMI Big Game. Send it all to Fujifilm Freeze Frame Competition, P.O. Box 8, Broadway 2007, New South Wales. Don't forget to include a Fujifilm pack with your entry. All entries will be included in our major draw, September 15, for a trip for four to Los Angeles, flying Air New Zealand. Certainly is a great family prize, that trip for four courtesy of Air New Zealand. And, of course, the big prize here today is the two Winfield Cup points. Manly with a great first 40 minutes in front of this magnificent crowd at Cobra. No doubt Graham Lowe would be more than happy with his side. And just talking what they should be doing in the second 40. They've had a good listen to their coach, Brian Smith. And St. George fans who are here in huge numbers will be hoping for a bit of a turnaround. They started the first 20 so well. And Manly finished off powerfully the second part of that first half. Just awaiting the arrival of the Manly side. Michael O'Connor bringing back his team who would be very confident the way they got into gear late in that first half. Plenty of work amongst the forwards and Hasler and Turvey causing some problems. Iroh hasn't had too many chances yet, but their fans have had plenty to cheer about. A late man out, Ian Roberts. The shadows starting to creep across from the grandstand here in Cogra. And Manly leads 16 to 4, the start of this second half. The first five or ten so important for the Saints. 85 first half tackles made by St. George. Hardy and Goulet, the best amongst the Saints. Manley with 71. Jones with 11. McCallum. Just checking with both captains again. And the Saints get us underway. Ridge just tapping it up to recover the ball. Taken by a fire. And also Elliott. Well, Bill, there was some controversy at half-time. Graham, I've got to report something that hurts me deeply, and that is that coming off the field at half-time, Ian Roberts was attacked by a spectator. It's something we've always feared, and we're going to hear a lot more of. But getting onto the teams, well, St George coach Brian Smith, he spoke about the kicking game. He thought it was very poor. They're going to use the wind in the second half. That was the basis of all their problems. And as you'll see during the call, Mark Ellison's on for Tony Priddle that's got suspected medial ligament damage. Graham Lowe was pretty happy with his side, and why wouldn't he be? He just stressed the importance of his disciplined defensive line and also being the next scorers. That's exactly right, as Dunford brings it away, but Ellison does have a very good kicking game, so with that breeze at their back, he'll be a key man for the Saints. The kick across the paddock to Walford, and an open paddock here. He'll have a chance to take on Hancock and get away. No, Hancock comes a second time. He loses it, and Roberts has it. And Roberts, not too happy with Mark Coyne. I think he's pretty unhappy with the world at the moment. <laughs> he towers over Greg McCallum. But that clearing kick by Matthew Ridge gave you an indication of just how strong this breeze is. He, uh, he gave it uh, all he could. He, got, he, managed, he was struggling to manage uh, a 15-metre gain in territory. So St George have got an enormous breeze and they've got to use it. Turvey across the paddock. Hosking. Great first half for Manley. Eight times he took it up to the defensive line. Tierney with a half a dozen for the Saints. Jones now strongly over halfway. Taking defenders with him. Dunford to the back line. Hasler to Tuvi. For Ira. Standing. Ridge. Too much defence on Ridge. Hasler pushes Goulet away. He did the damage with a spectacular individual try from dummy half in the first 40. He's trying to play for two men himself and Cliff Lines. Great player he is. Kick from Ridge. Potter right on the sideline. He can't do anything about it. That's a highlight of Ridge's play. He can do so many of the little things very very well the solid parts of play that mean a lot and with this win graham don't be surprised if st george think about kicking with it for their two wingers and kicking very early ridge is flat Beatty. 
Ridge was up in the line making that tackle, so there's still nobody home for Manley. Ridge will try and get back quickly now. Osborne. This crowd setting up the chant for the St. George side. Mike Coyne stood up O'Connor. He kicks ahead. Walford and Ridge, the bounce of the ball so important. Ridge is there. So the bounce could have gone anywhere. But it stayed there for Ridge to make the ball dead. It was Mark Coyne who stood up O'Connor beautifully. Got to the outside. He thought that Walford might have the pace to go on, but Ridge had the big head start. And the ball sat up nicely for him. Yeah, tremendous pace there from Mark Coyne. He's a player that uh, has scored quite a few tries with St. George so far this year, and he does it all with pace. Osborne. The Saints want to be next scorers. It is showing. Tierney. Heading it towards the post. Just about to come out of the shadows from the grandstand. St. George is the chant here as the red and whites are 10 metres away. Hardy across Ellison for Goulet. Goulet who plays just like an outside centre. Ellison from dummy half. They go down to the wire on the last tackle. Hodges running it. Peter Coyne to Elliott, who was outside O'Connor, but the ball back in goes to Dunford. Well, Elliott had to throw the ball somewhere then. It was going to be a turnover anyway. He took the option, hopefully picking up one of his supports, but it, uh, it went to Michael O'Connor. I think O'Connor showed him plenty of room here, just allowed him to be outside, knowing that he could mow him down. If it had that been Tony Priddle, he wouldn't have got to him. That would have been the danger if it hadn't been a Priddle or a Goulet, Bill. Yeah, it sure would have been. I think Priddle's going to be a big loss for the Dragons. Hosking playing it just outside the 22 for Manly. They're happy to go to the backs inside their own danger zone. Stokes can't get away from a fire. But he can unload for O'Connor. And O'Connor likewise for Turvey. 16 to 4, Manly. Ridge. Keeping it along the deck. Potter. Trying to beat Hasler. He's 40 metres out from his line. A fire. No opportunities for him out on the wing so far. They can't blame a, a wet sideline this week. They, uh, there were some complaints after their last match against Western Suburbs that the West officials went down the, uh, the sidelines to, to slow down off here or off fire and, uh, and Walford. But certainly not the case here today. There's hardly any grass on the ground. They've made it so low. Potter from dummy half. No one there. He kicks ahead. O'Connor will win the race. But will he get out of there? Potter turns him. Tierney's there. Beating's coming. He beats all three. Great balance from the Manly captain. Great attack from St. George. Great counter-attack and play from Manly. Michael O'Connor loved that too up against his old team. That's how you keep your cool. Bella. St. George are really putting it to Manly since half-time. Hosking. His steps were shortening a little. He's a tired man. I'm not sure that he was expecting the ball there. Roberts gets a little wider, but he gets hammered, although he unloads it. Tuvi! Some desperate tackles here when players put the foot down. Just being grabbed by jumpers and shorts and just being pulled back. Now the kick and a good one from Manley. So once more they send St. George back to their territory. And it really is a fast surface here. As I just said, the, the grass has been cut very low. The, the actual soil is, has been rolled. It's very, very fast, which is good not only for the quicker guys on the side, but also for the kickers. That ball really hits the ground and runs. Martin a fire in a great position to chase if St George want to kick. Now have a look. The man at mark is Matthew Ridge. There's no one back. Still no one there. 
It was the same routine before from the previous scrum on the 22, and Ridge has stayed in the line again. Yeah, when you've got a, a player of the speed of Martin the Fire in the side, it's, uh, it, it's a matter of how long before Brian Smith sends a message on for the next scrum. Here's a little chip. Mark Coyne, great skills. Clever stuff. That's what they tried just before half-time, the little chip. Now Walford goes to the backs. Peter Coyne, he kicks to a fire's wing. About three play the balls too late. And it was too far this time. He went for the sideline, in fact. So they just want to keep pinning Manley down near their own end with this breeze at their back, St. George. And another way of breaking up this defense, of course, is the little chip. Coyne was just caught from behind. Line ball, whether he had it before O'Connor tackled him. Derby, chased and put down by Hardy. Iro. Good run from him. Good to see him getting involved. He's a handful when he goes. He's big enough for sure. Hasler. Once again, Des Hasler making 15 metres there out of dummy half. The mark of the fence from St. George has been pretty ordinary for much of this match. It, again, it was here. Three defenders fall off. Cunningham's there on the inside of Dunford. A fire will get there, but not in time. They get hurt from the dummy half once more. Yeah, that mark of defence, very ordinary, right? Manly are finding their way through, right up the middle. Dunford beats one, two, three on the MMI replay. He should have been put down inside his own half. Cunningham with great support play. A fire was motoring, but too late. Hey, Graham, it's not as though Matt Dunford is a quick dummy half. He's a big, strong dummy half. Nothing too fast in the way of speed, but he just brushed through a couple of ordinary tackles there and great support here from Owen Cunningham. From this point on, it was a race against Martin Afire, who he had uh, 10 metres on, but Afire catches up to him, but it was all too late. Cunningham, who joined the side after Lyons was the late scratching. He enjoys himself out there with a try. They're still singing on the hill. The boys from the North Shore. Matthew Ridge taking it back near the 22. If he adds two more, it's 150 points for Ridge for 1991. 64 goals, two field goals, five tries. Does he add another? No. Matthew He's Ridge human. is human, yeah. He goes back to halfway. Manly 20, St. George 4. On his team at half time, they had to be the next scorers. They will need some miracles now. Ridge. He's happy to bring it back himself. He's done it on three or four occasions from restarts in the game. Stokes. Let's have a look and see if the pattern holds here. It'll be Jones, Bella and then Hosking if they play to their normal uh, orientation. Well, Bella went as a decoy on a short blind. Hasler sighted a gap up the middle. The gap has stayed there for most of the game for the Saints behind that play the ball. Bella. Well, he ended up with it. <laughs> now, the trainer apparently just found that blade from a knife. He was out on the field. That's why he was out there. And the game was held up on uh, right on halfway for the restart. They really haven't got any advantage out wide on St. George Manley in this game. It has just kept on coming close to the ruck and from dummy half. Yeah, Man uh, Manly have struggled against St. George's quick-moving defence out wide, led by, uh, by Michael Beatty. But uh, around the rucks is where they've, they've made all the breaks, in particular that marker area. Yeah, what they did, they up-tempoed their game, Manly. I think they realised that what they were doing wasn't good enough. They went up a gear, but hasn't that worked for them? O'Connor stepping. What about the change to some St. George tactics, Bill? I think they're too far down the mine now to change anything, Graham. It's, it's going to be very tough to get out of it from 20 points to four, and what they've got to do is just get their game in order, start thinking Aussie, about you know, what they've got to do in front of them in the next couple of weeks, but players are playing for spots too, and that's important. Hosking with a surge. Tremendous asset he's been to the Manly Club since he joined them. 
Well, he played here years ago, then he went to South Sydney for a couple of years and then has come back and uh, he really has played well over the last, uh, particularly the last six weeks. Hasler on a run around with Juvie. And then wide to Roberts. He gets his hands free. And Connor basketballs it back to Cunningham. Cunningham waits it down to the St. George corner. Into the end goal. Cunningham's chasing Potter. We'll have to look over his shoulder. He beats Cunningham cleverly. There's been nothing wrong with the form of this man in the game. What a tackle from Roberts. Crunch. And he screams at him to get up and play it. So Roberts is all fired up. What a tackle. Potter was flying a million miles an hour. This is what you call a dead end. Bang. Yeah, Ian Roberts gambled there that Michael Potter was going to jet, step off the right foot. He did and crunched him. Hodges is ducking some tackles. Here's Hardy. The Saints with a chance. Peter Gill went without it. I don't think Hardy heard the call. Peter Coyne, Gill, keeps it alive cleverly. Beatty throws it down for Hardy. Hardy had men outside. Now Elliot, still they throw it around. They put it down. Just when they were threatening, the mistakes again. I was about to take it back and stay. They were still alive. If they could have put a try on the end of that, anything could have happened. There was still so much time. Only midway through the second half. Stokes, he enjoys the comfort of that dummy half running. 20 to 4, Manly over the Saints. Manly are in trouble, though. They have injured men down. Hasler goes to O'Connor. Back for Cunningham. Manly make a mistake. Now, Roberts is in trouble for Manly. Assisted from the field. Dunford is hobbling. Roberts is going to the head bin. Chris White goes on. So there could be some problems for Manly if the Saints can post a quick try. A couple of vital changes. Chris White rushes out in 41. They've, all, they've also got Glenn Bourne here on the sideline and St. George got, have got Peter Spring ready. Mark Coyne. The Saints smelling a chance. Hardy. Dunford is still hobbling. They're carrying him in the Manly side. Goulet up the middle. The Saints looking for a try that will open it up. Potter. There's been a lot of character, a lot of guts in the last five minutes by the Dragons. Now to Elliott. Back for Peter Coyne. Hodges, Manly keep their line. Goulet, no one outside him. Now there is Gill, but he knocks on. Everybody talks about this manly attack and how they can put points on the board, but their defence has been outstanding today, as it was last week. And uh, they scrambled in defence here. Goulet got halfway through a break, a gap offloaded to Gill, but the cover defence was there in numbers anyway. Manly rushing another change out there, Glenn Bourne. In 21. He might be about a two or three thousand dollar player today, Glenn Bourne. That is a fine to the Manly Club for a late change to their side. And if that's all they get fined, then I think the uh, the fining system needs to be looked at. That's a pretty paltry fine. Iro. Dunford goes to join Ian Roberts. He gets to lean on the trainer. Jones. This is where Manly now need to keep their cool. Keep it tight. Hosking. Handling errors just against the Saints. Bella. They were up quickly on the short blind. Bella just stays about an inch away from the sideline. Ridge of the kick in before Goulet could charge it down. But Potter, the most dangerous saint today. Spinning away from Bourne. Walford. Walford goes. Walford and Ridge. O'Connor was back there with Ridge. Now Goulet looking for somebody. The Saints. Getting some changes out there. Spring playing it. Springs in 23. 
Peter Coy. Manley is starting to open up up the middle. Hasler might be in the bin. No. Yes, he is. So they're down to 12 for 10 minutes. The Saints won't waste any time. Elliott looks for the tap. Straight into the Manly defence. 10 metres away. A try now makes it more than interesting. Gill. Back it comes for Ellison. Burrows his way to two metres away. Elliott. He got one in the first half from dummy half. Now he gets it back. Double movement. What a turning point that could have been. It goes down to good defence again. Great handling here from Allison. Short, reached out. Short yeah. the first time, but good defence. Yeah, tremendous defence. The Manly defence, they concertinaed in. Uh, and strength here of Cunningham, who held him back. Ellison, definitely double movement, and McCallum on the spot to rule. He was close to still being alive, but the ball did touch the ground first time. And McCallum right on the spot, as you say. Bella. Juvie. 20 to 4, Manly. It is tough now. You dig deep, Bill, looking for something, and you dig as deep as that, but you get denied. They've thrown everything at them. I think it's been a very courageous effort the last 10 minutes by the Dragons. They've had a bit more ball. They've tried to use it. But they've come at Manly everywhere. They came at them up the middle. They tried to stretch them out wide, but Manly's defence has been rock solid. Iro. Difficult pass for Stokes. It went back. Last tackle. O'Connor probably with the kick. He decides to go to Ridge instead. Off the left boot, he kicks back across the ruck and finds the sideline. Peter Kine to Potter. Hundred and twenty-five tackles overall for Manley. The possession favoring them still. But in the opposition half, it's been the Saints. Hardy. He nearly got through. Bella had a hold of one arm. Spring. Hodges. Peter Coyne. To Goulet. Little Jeff Turvey was one of the first in. Elliott throws it back for Walford. Walford doing the right thing. He's gone hunting for the ball. Spring. Spring striding out. He was looking back inside for a fire. He couldn't get it to him cleanly. They had some support play there, inside and out. Yeah, they had numbers, and uh, Martin Afire was there. If he had got that, he, he was in under the post. It, pace outside as well with Mark Coyne, but uh, nevertheless, great cover defence once again from Manly. That head out, not probably showing it completely because Coyne looked to be the better option on the outside. Against the feed, still with a chance with the Saints. They must score here. Mark Coyne, back to Potter. This is where they've got to make it work. They get one back from the forwards with a win against the feed. Potter, first receiver, thought about running. Now Hardy to Elliott. One-hander, back to Peter Coyne to Spring, who was charging onto it. Ellison, here's the numbers if they go left quickly. Hodges had two men outside. He looked as though he should have moved it. But that's the answer. Second phase play. They've tried everything else. They've just got to keep popping up passes. Coin. The defence is holding. And some remarkable defence from Manley. Five metres from their own line, Manley. Over the top, Goulet! It's been a long time coming. But there is still time. There'll be an important goal to be struck here to get them to double figures. Now, they've been building up on the MMI replay. They kept on travelling this ball to the left. 
They were happy to stay on the short blind side. Gill heard the call. Over the top to Goulet. He's tall enough. Yeah, put this try down to two factors. 12 men on the field and a mountain of possession against you. Goulet in a good position there, and he only had to stretch out and score the try. Scott Goulet, who has been waiting out wide most of the afternoon. He stayed on a short blind to get the try. And this big crowd at Cogra might be believing the Saints are still a chance. Walford kicked one from wide against West to make it six all under great pressure. Does he get one from wide out here? He doesn't. Those extra two were vital. Manly 20, St George 8. in fact the record here previously in the 70s was set was set at 23,582 but there have been changes made to this Cogra Oval ground yeah that was before the grandstand was built Graham and that's cut back on the capacity a lot they wouldn't get many more than they've got here today in this ground no well they're finding out about the capacity this afternoon Goulet And that's the new grandstand that sends these shadows over the ground. Ellison. Elliot. Elliot gets it back. And that's what they need. You see that second phase play where they're able to keep the ball alive and keep the play rolling. That's the one factor that's been missing. They need somebody coming hard and strong like Hodges here, but they coughed it up. Ridge looking for the advantage. McCallum will bring it back for the scrum. The most impressive thing, uh, as far as I'm concerned, about Manly's performance today is that they look so fresh. They look a lot fresher than they have for, well, since the representative season started. And I think that explains it because uh, uh, they've had a lot of players engaged in the State of Origin series, in the Test series. But those players have had a, had more than a week's break now, uh, or a week's break since last their last match, but more than a week's break since the representative games, and they're looking a lot fresher. Turvey. From dummy half goes Cunningham. It's been a while since Manly have enjoyed possession in St. George territory. They still have two minutes before Hasler will be back. Jones. Ten sex, the Saints have the scrums. One of those against the feed. Iro left it behind. A fire. A little bit of room. They hurried over there in cover, Manley. Cunningham comes over to make an important tackle to stop it with Hodges. The full marks to Frank Stokes out there on the wing. Uh, Martin the Fire has had a couple of half chances, but Stokes has got has wanted him out. Hancock. Coming from behind here on Mark Coyne. The Saints needing another quick try. Elliott, a fire in midfield, kicking ahead. He tripped a little. Now Hancock, bounce of the ball. Set up for him, too. So Manly scrambling. Stokes over from the far wing to make a run from dummy half. They put him over the sideline. Saints will have the feed. And remarkable strength there from Martin Fire as well. It was... Uh, it was basically a wrestling match between Frank Stokes, who had the ball. Uh, well, Walford was the man, actually. The fire came in to assist, but uh, plenty of strength there from Ricky Walford to put Frank Stokes over the sideline. And the man feeding this scrum, number 20, Seth Heron, out of the reserve grade. Heron. He scored two great tries in the reserve grade and was by far the player of the match. Well, he'll need to score two quick ones here. Gill. Beat a coin. A fire. Iro pursues him and puts him down. Potter up in the line, trying to lift his side. That ball looked as though it was thrown forward. There's Hasler. A few seconds left for him. Can they hold out? A fire back to Gill. Gill over his head. Goulet. Goulet, the hands numbers if they shift. Peter Coy, beating quick hands. Elliott turns his back. One bad pass and it all slowed down. Hardy, harassed by Hancock. Hasler rushes back out. They've got 13 again. Heron to Coyne. 
Crane cuts a man out. Potter. Potter must shift. Goulet. Goulet to Gil. They've got it. The game is far from over. Gil is hurrying because he knows they've got another important goal kick ahead of them. This time on the MMI replay, they did shift it properly. They had the numbers. Manly has scrambled and scrambled. This time, those numbers that were trying to get there couldn't get there in time. Yeah, Manly had condensed on this side of the field, and St. George seized the opportunity. Great ball, long ball here from Peter Coyne. Out to Michael Potter, who offload, but Manly couldn't get across quickly enough in cover defence, and Peter Gill was out there to accept the final pass and put the ball down for the try. Peter Gill gets that most important try, and there is a change to the kicking ranks. And how important is this kick? Because if he kicks this one and gets it to 2014, they're only a converted try away from a draw. Mark Ellison, he is a goal-kicking specialist. But he has the kick from where Walford was a few moments ago out on the sideline. Manly, 13 sets of eyes in the Manly side will be on this kick. They breathe a sigh of relief. The Saints are doing it in tries, but it's not enough at the moment. 20 to 12, there's time left. Five minutes remaining. 20 to 12, Manly over St. George. Crowd thinking the Jones is milking it. He will have time to recover with the trainer. Bella. Bella up the middle. Cunningham. Last tackle. Four minutes remaining. Ridge. Chipping and chasing. But straight to a fire. He will come to the open side. The Saints to run it. Heron. Gets it to Mark Coyne. Driving tackle from Tooby. Copy book stuff. Gill. Taken by Bourne. The Dragons have to take some chances here. They've got a back line set. They'll move it as soon as they possibly can. Quick hands to Walford. Walford will kick ahead. Walford will beat Ridge. No, Ridge is getting there. And he's still alive. Heron chasing. Great tackle. The Saints will get it back. But not enough time for them. Yeah, there was some splendid football in this, Graham. St. George seized the opportunity on the blind side. Ricky Walford showed a ton of pace. They, he kicked over the top. Ridge had him covered all the way, but the bounce of the ball was something that was unpredictable. Ridge then had the opportunity to take it out. Se Cecil Heron came through, ankle tapped him, and took him for the second time. Ridge had a decision to make, too, whether he did a Jamie Ainscoe and took him out or, or tried to have a foot race for the ball. He chose the latter. He did it well. 20 to 12, Manly. Big second half from the Saints, but goal kicking has cost them. Goulet. Elliott back to Hardy. Aren't they looking a lot better now they're offloading the ball? Big performance, they're storming home, but time against them. Elliott gets a try. Beatty is running this team back. They're going to pick Elliott up and say, let's get back to halfway even if there's only a couple of tackles in it. So Elliott gets a double on the MMI replay. No marker. Nobody there at all. He just spun out of the tackle of Jones and put it down. Elliott with the try. Ellison with the kick. Unsuccessful with the kick from the sideline. There's his mount out near the chalk. This to make it 20 to 18. There's about 90 seconds remaining. Time for a kickoff. Manly 20 to 18 by two. McCullum will hurry this Manly side back for the restart. Manly a 
counting down the clock. Over 20,000 at Cogra looking for a miracle. Stokes. Graham Lowe. Sideline full of nerves. What a finish. 60 seconds. They've got players like Walford and O'Fire who can pull it out. Walford shoot. Walford to reach. Still going. He'll get to his feet quickly. The Saints don't believe it's over. Gill. Manly trying to rush everybody back in defence. This is what they did against Brisbane, Graham. 30 seconds. From one side to the other. Coin to Hardy. An incredible second half. The Saints might still rue this. No, they might still celebrate. Potter puts it down. That'll be it. Right down to the final few seconds. St. George gave their fans some real hope here. Beatty was looking for Potter. There was pressure on him from O'Connor. And Manley scrambled. A great first 40 from the Sea Eagles. A spectacular performance in the second from St. George. Watch this feed. Manley haven't got a specialist hooker and had nowhere else to go. Tuvi. Trying to put both arms around the ball now. Time is up. The siren's gone. McCallum didn't hear it. Now he's checking sideline. That's it. Graham Lowe breathes a sigh of relief. He's congratulated by his coaching staff. Manly looked to have it well and truly wrapped up. But no one really counted on this character from St. George. They scored more tries. But they couldn't land the goals. Ian Roberts still not looking well after taking a heavy knock. What a finish to this MMI big game. Hasler, Hancock, Cunningham trying scorers for Manly. Reads the difference. How many times have we said that in 1991? Elliott got a double for St. George. Goulet and Gill tries that really scared Manly. One round remaining before the semi-final start. North's on 26 must win today or next week to make the semi-finals, while St George on 24 need to win today and next week if they're to stay in the race, and both come here after recording losses last week. North's were thrashed by the Brisbane Broncos 44-6, while St George narrowly missed out on the two points, going down to Manly 18 points to 20. Today is a big test for both these sides, with the semi-finals just around the corner. Norths have got the shakes at the wrong end of the season, suffering a hard-fought loss to Manly and then a whipping by Brisbane. And today, they're without seven players on the injured list, so they're not even at half strength. Out are Conlon, Fennec, Jackson, Fairley, Scott Wilson, Moore and Jarvis. Tony Ray is a fresh reserve and Peter McPhail moves to hooker. He's alongside front rower Adrian Toole. Typical of Norths, go forward, hard and straight, close to the ruck while centre Greg Florimo has been in excellent form, running strongly with real determination this season. St George have been attacking beautifully out wide with precision passing and running. But against Manly last week, their defence, especially at the marker, opened up several times. And again today, they're without hooker Wayne Collins to keep it tight. Tall, rangy second rower Scott Goulet is their chief running forward. He could run at the little men, Soden and Martin. Centre Mark Coyne has tremendous acceleration and the pace to beat his opponent on the outside. And electric winger Martin Afire, after a four-match drought, is due to add to his 11 tries. It appears Steve Martin is taking no chances with injuries and is willing to forego the points this week to make sure of the final five next week against the Gold Coast Club. Well, the injuries sustained by Norris can be seen as, as a blessing in disguise. It gives Steve Martin the opportunity to experiment. Halligan gets to go at the fullback spot. Uh, Gary Larson gets a chance to tie up that lock forward position and Gavin Jones certainly has a point to prove to his coach even though it has been reported that Steve Martin is looking down the track to the Gold Coast game it will be in the back of his mind that if they can cause an upset here today they'll be in line to clinch a top three position. A very important game as the Dragons go in as favourites against the depleted Bears. Stand by for Rugby League action at its best. Live and uninterrupted on ABC Sport, your national network. The waves are crashing out on Botany Bay at La Perouse as St George take the field here at Cogger Oval. It's a brisk, wintry afternoon. The sun's shining, but 
quite a strong wind blowing down the ground and the dragons know that they have a very important match on their hands today they simply have to win these last two games to make sure of being in the top five the fullback is michael potter the set of three quarters walford mark coin michael Beatty, and martin the fire five eight peter coin halfback troy hodges the forward lineup at lock forward is jeff hardy the second rows goulet and peter gill in the second row with elliot mark ellison at hooker for wayne collins and peter spring the front row the coach is brian smith the bears on the field this makeshift bears lineup let's have a good look at it